Um, hello fellow drawers, how's it going? My name is Valerie, I am a self-taught digital artist. I really wanted to make this video to just share my thoughts about this whole situation because it's just insane to me, it's crazy, it makes my blood boil. And I have a lot of personal feelings about this. So about a year ago, the art community greeted a new art baby in the face of a niche YouTuber named PewDiePie, who decided to challenge himself by picking up drawing for the first time in his life to see if it can actually improve in a month. But that month later turned into 100 days and recently PewDiePie uploaded his third video in this series showcasing his 365 day progress in art. And you might be thinking, wow, that's admirable. Just sticking with it and going a full year of drawing every day, practicing, learning, that is amazing. We respect that. Yeah. That's what I thought too. But it wouldn't be a Twitter art community if it wasn't extremely toxic and weird about something really harmless and positive. I'm not even on Twitter, never have been, never going to be. But whenever I hear news like this, I automatically assume those people come from Twitter, aka the Arkham Asylum of the internet. But before we get into people being mad, let's quickly recap PewDiePie's drawing progress that he has made in a year of drawing every day. The techniques he used to learn and improve, what he did right and what he could have maybe done differently. Differently, and the general outtake and advice for those who maybe got inspired and also want to start their art journey and improve their art this year. First video, 30 days. In his first video, he was honestly saying that he didn't really know what he was doing, didn't know what he actually wanted to draw and where to start, so he started by doodling random faces in his sketchbook. It's just a mess. I don't even know. <laughs> it's embarrassing to show these. Day six is just in pain. I'm cringing so hard looking at these. They all look like elves. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe because the ears are giant. Then he discovered references. He started redrawing illustrations from his favorite mangas, faces and expressions that caught his eye, his favorite characters and Martia, the things he loved and that were exciting to draw. Day 24, I, for a change of pace, decided to draw some anime characters. You can see power on the left. I followed a tutorial online as well. This really helped a lot. I think drawing anime style was just easier somehow and following a reference was also way easier. They're not good by any means, but I was finally, finally, I just felt like I clicked. I could draw these super quick and it was fun. I was just sketching random stuff drew one quick one, moved on to the next one. And I really, really enjoyed it. After 24 days, I was finally having fun. And that, in my opinion, is the best way you can approach art when you're just starting out by doing something fun, something simple, something that you enjoy. I remember when I was a kid, I took a stack of printer paper and spent several days drawing all the different Pokemon. Cute little characters made of simple, easy shapes that were quick and fun to draw. Anything that keeps you excited and helps you stay consistent, draw that. Then he also mentioned he started watching tutorials on basic drawing principles, how to draw the head, facial proportions, stuff like that, to better understand what he was supposed to go for. I watched a draw along by Akihito Yoshitomi. Uh, really cool style. So drawing along, yeah, I guess it helped, but it still looks how it looks like. Cool. So I found this artist on YouTube I recommend, Chomang Drawing, that does a lot of tutorials and I really like this style too because they weren't anime style, it was just drawing girls and they look really good, but not mine. So I learned the basic of drawing the circle and the eyes and how to proportion it all. And it was clear from the beginning that he has kind of already chosen a niche for himself. That niche being anime girls, which is highly respectable. Let me shake your hand. What? What else would you choose? Landscapes? That's cringe for losers. So he kept sketching every day, making mistakes and often feeling frustrated and unhappy with his drawings, some of which he scribbled out completely. And I think that is healthy. If you don't like it, get rid of it. Out of sight, out of mind. And by the end of 30 days, this is how much he managed to improve. And there we go. Day 30. I don't like all of these, but some of them are kind of cool. Drew them just from my head as well. So I'm happy about that. And guess what? Day 31, I kept going because I actually realized I enjoy drawing now. <laughs> Maybe the difference will not seem as striking after we watch part two, but it is still very noticeable. Even in the line confidence, where in his first pages it really showed that he wasn't really sure what he was doing yet, was kind of chicken scratching here and there, versus here his lines look way more confident and everything looks more intentional. And he said that he felt like he was finally having fun drawing, and that is all that matters. Video number two, 100 days. And this one I think was the catalyst for so many buttholes getting set on 
fire because while by the end of 30 days he was drawing like this by the end of 100 days he drew like this see what i'm saying well let's see how he got there he told us he bought some ink pens or markers for liner but he didn't really like them so he continued sketching with a pencil oh, i really like drawing these and i feel like i got the proportions decent enough which i couldn't do before so yeah i love drawing these it's fun to try out different styles I have not developed my own and I'm just trying to draw different things that I see and like as much as possible. And that's what everyone told me as well. The best way to improve is draw from reference, so. Then he shared a feeling that I think we all have experienced. When we draw something so good, we cannot believe we even did it ourselves. And you can stop looking at that piece in amazement and you think, well, the next one must be even better, right? But no, for some reason you cannot do it again. It looks bad again. And that can be really frustrating and send you into this loop of art block and sadness because you think that you will never be able to top that in your life. And now everything you draw looks awful in comparison. I started drawing more realistic, less anime, and I drew this one. And my god, I was so proud of it. I loved it so much. I couldn't believe I drew it. And I felt like, yes, I did it. I drew something I liked. Finally. It was also kind of a blessing and a curse because I would always compare whatever I drew to the best thing I felt like I drew. And it made me really hate a lot of stuff that I drew that I don't think was that bad. Then he bought a bigger sketchbook, which in my opinion is great. And I personally find it easier to draw on bigger pages. Yes, I draw cat girls. Don't judge me. So I tried to do one sort of page per day, which I really like doing. Try to commit to a full, more full body, different manga and stuff like that. You can see how many attempts it took me to actually draw <laughs> something I was happy with. I feel like you draw one thing you like that will cost you 10 things you hate. Then he started adding colors with colored pens and markers, just having fun experimenting. Here we go. So I borrowed one of Marcia's pens, the green one. I never used a marker before, so I, I wasn't sure how to do it. So I bought my own markers obviously it takes more time to color stuff but i really enjoyed doing it and it may, sort of makes them come to life more and i was trying out different things and on day 84 he finally drew something that topped his previous favorite my new favorite i love this one so it took me 40 days to feel like i drew something i liked again <laughs> I think this drawing looks amazing and the way he implements colors into his drawings is so fun and cool he's like really good at it. he also mentioned using himself and his own body for references whenever he wanted to draw a complicated pose he just took a picture of himself and used that as a reference and i highly respect that i use myself for references all the time especially the hands because why look for a reference when you can be the reference then on day 98 he made this illustration which is really cute so I colored in the frogs and I decided to add some splash of green just so the three colors would show up somewhere on her as well. That is genius. Those are some professional moves. I, I don't know where he learned that, but that is a very right thing to do. That makes your drawing look cohesive, like everything belongs and works together. That concludes the second video in the series. And he thanked everyone for being supportive of his journey and encouraging him to keep going. And yeah, how can you not be? Especially considering how respectful he has been to the art community. He wasn't bragging or showing off or offending anyone. You couldn't find anything negative about it if you tried. Or could you? But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's watch our third video and see what progress has been made in 365 days. In the third update, Felix went back to look at his drawings from the beginning and he said something that I cannot agree with more and couldn't have said it better. I realize, and maybe other people have said this too, but uh, drawing is more about training your brain to see rather than actually technical with your hand. I think that's a misconception I had. That is so true it's like an optical illusion a mind trick black magic i don't know whenever i look at my drawings even from a year ago they look so off it's disturbing i feel like someone took my ipad and purposely liquefied them and i remember looking at that same drawing a year ago and thinking that that is the most flawless perfect thing ever how did i not see that why did I not see that? How could my brain evolve so much in a year that now I see this image completely differently? But the next thing he said, I am not so sure if I agree with it. Let's see. Don't do what I did. I just kept drawing the same things. Anime girl, anime girl, too much anime. 
I wanted to be more consistent. I think that's why I kept doing this. But if I had to redo it, absolutely not. This is where I should have moved on to something else. I should have just drawn anything out. In my opinion, the fact that he only drew the same one thing for such a long period of time without taking any side quests, I think that consistency is what allowed him to improve so fast. And he didn't improve at drawing as a whole. He still has no idea how to draw bodies, clothes, hands, animals, robots, dragons. He has improved at drawing anime girls' faces because he only drew anime girls' faces for months. That is why. If he would have drawn everything everywhere all at once, I believe the improvement wouldn't be even remotely close to what we see now. It's like going to school. Yes, you have been studying like 20 subjects for 11 years, but at the end you realize that you're not really good at any of them. Same thing with art. You can spend years drawing, but if your art is all over the place, today you draw faces, tomorrow you draw dogs, next day you draw plants, then you get into graffiti and then you realize that birds have always had a special place in your heart. But then, oh no, my little pony fandom is still alive. What do I do? What if that's where I belong? And don't get me wrong, it's okay to try out different things if you don't know where you want to go with art to find something that you enjoy the most. That is what every artist goes through. But don't expect much improvement during that self-search time. When I was just starting out, I hated drawing people. I believed that my destiny was to be a creature designer and draw creepy monsters. And only later I realized that, oh, drawing people is actually kind of fun and I'm going to do that from now on. You cannot learn how to draw. You can learn how to draw blank. And you have to be eventually able to fill in that blank for yourself and stick with something specific for a reasonable amount of time. But I also think, you know, the improvement I had, anyone can achieve. Like, I wanted my video to be inspiring for other people to do the same thing. Like, that's my goal. Like, people say anyone can draw, and I truly, truly believe that. Yes, absolutely. Talent does not exist. It's just hard work and dedication. And anyone can do it, I believe. You start with a circle, you draw a middle line, you draw where the eyes are gonna be, the nose, the mouth, the ear. This method is so helpful because when you draw, it's all about balance. Like, uh, if I drew directly, same thing, and anything is like out of proportion, the whole thing just kind of looks weird. <laughs> so to draw directly, it was so difficult. So I bought this pen and I told myself I was going to force myself to use this pen, even though it looks like shit. I was going to really like, I'm going to use this pen. I need to learn how to draw without, without the whole circle thing again. Now here out of nowhere, PewDiePie decided, you know what? I'm going to become the next Kim Jong-gi. Guidelines? <laughs> That's for puss. And I don't think that is the right way to go, especially that early on. And even later on still, I don't think drawing without guidelines should even be a goal in art. Because guidelines are good. All artists, even industry professionals, draw with guidelines. They build the body and the face with guidelines to make sure the proportions and everything looks right. And guidelines help you understand everything you're drawing as a 3D object that can twist and turn and change its size and proportions in perspective and from different angles and by knowing and using that structure you are able to construct the body or face from any angle and any perspective you want so yeah i don't think you should get rid of guidelines they're very helpful they're good it's not some bad art habit that only beginners use but as a fun challenge for yourself yeah you can do it it's cool it's fun then he shared some art books that he picked up which is obviously great because he wanted to learn other stuff like anatomy and perspective and obviously that felt like taking so many steps back because while his face drawing skills were let's say at level 30 his body drawing skills were still at level zero because he simply didn't practice it. So yeah, if you want to improve, you have to kind of go through the pain of sucking again, I guess. <laughs> and then at the very last minute, he decided to buy an iPad and get into digital art. Um... <laughs> Coming in clutch last minute. So I started off just sketching and I was still too scared to draw bodies. I drew this, which I thought was going to be amazing. And uh, I ended up really hating it. I think the fun colors are fun, but I didn't know how to draw hair. 
I at least try to draw like a full body. In my opinion, for the first digital art drawing experience, that is really good. Because switching over and getting used to digital art can be pretty complicated and take some time because it just feels so different and your hand moves completely differently and just the feeling of drawing on a screen. But he did it and I mean, look at this one. This one is so good and this one too, that's really impressive. And the final drawing, the drawing that concludes an entire year of hard work, trial and error. So I sketched for a couple days and I told myself I'm gonna give one last effort. I have to really like it to actually sketch it. And this is the last thing I drew. I finished it yesterday and I think I'm finally happy with it. I finally drew clothes that isn't just black and uh, I actually put some more time into the hair and like making the lines look nice and uh, small little details and having the high contrast light maybe it's wrong but it's there at least and I think it makes it more interesting you know with some shadows and yeah am I allowed to be happy there it is I think it looks super cute it's like seeing this makes me so happy it's genuinely so wholesome but i will talk about my personal feelings later let's talk about what matters most and that is feelings of the netizens and trust me when i say their feelings were deeply hurt from people refusing to give credit to PewDiePie for putting so much time and effort into learning their craft and attributing his success to being a millionaire and therefore having a lot of money and free time or even speculating that he must have had gifted genetics to people saying that seeing PewDiePie improve made them want to quit art. The first point is just so good. Yes, you could improve at art more than I did because, well, duh, you're a millionaire, but just because someone stopped pumping out videos every single day doesn't mean they're doing nothing. He's still making videos. He still has brand deals and projects to work on. He has other hobbies and things to do. And most importantly, he has a newborn son to take care of. And besides, it wasn't like he was spending 8 hours a day making full page colored illustrations every single day. In that case, your point of not having that kind of time to dedicate to drawing every day would be completely valid. Yes, not many people have that kind of time. But that was not the case at all. All he was doing was making one page of simple pencil sketches a day. That is about 30 40 minutes max. Even the most grinding, hardworking bee with the busiest schedule could find 30 minutes a day to make some sketches. There cannot be any excuses. 30 minutes is very doable and you don't have to be a millionaire. Why are you on Twitter? You're so busy you don't have time for sketches but have time to be on Twitter? That's called a choice. You could be drawing but you choose not to. You could be improving, but you choose not to. That's on you. You could be a millionaire and have all the free time in the world, but still choose to spend all that time on Twitter. And having a lot of money, I don't even think that point is worth discussing because it's just so stupid. He was literally drawing with pencil on paper. That's it. Yes, he did try out some markers and pens, but that is for decor. Markers are not what helped him learn to draw. Art can be as cheap or as expensive as you make it to be. But the cost of someone's materials and their skill level are completely unrelated. You can draw with pencil and a ballpoint pen on printer paper, or you can buy the most expensive markers, leather, cover, designer, sketchbooks, and decorate every single page with golden flakes. But all of that doesn't matter. It's unnecessary. It's decor. A fancy branded sketchbook won't magically make you good at art. You still have to sit and learn and practice. Money cannot buy you skills so it means nothing. About the gifted genetics, I firmly believe that talent does not exist and no one is born with a gift for drawing. I've never seen or heard of that in my life. Every artist I saw showing their childhood works, they all just look like childhood work. They did not jump out of the womb with a skill of a senior artist from Blizzard. No, they've come a long way to get to where they are. This is how I drew people at 13. This is how I draw people at 20. This transition took thousands of hours of practice. I have zero people in my family even remotely related to any kind of art. Music, drawing, writing, nothing. I am the only beacon of creativity in my entire family tree. And at one point in the video, PewDiePie said that he thinks he was able to improve that fast due to being older and that he doesn't think he would achieve the same kind of result 
earlier in life. And I think there might be some truth to this, even though I believe art skills and age are never related and you can be good or bad at any age. But I think as we get older, we get better at setting our goals, developing some learning plan and being intentional with it rather than being an impulsive teenager with random outbursts of energy. So maybe in that sense, age does play a role. And people saying that seeing PewDiePie succeed made them so upset they're quitting art. Like, oh, I've been drawing for years and still bad at it. That's so discouraging. Man, again, this depends on the person and the situation. You can draw once a month and say that you have been drawing for years this way, but obviously you won't see any progress because you're drawing once a month. Or again, if you're drawing random stuff every time and have no specific direction with it, your progress will be slower because it is being distributed among so many things. And instead of getting 100% of progress in one singular thing, you get 2% of progress in 50 different things, which obviously seems like non-existent. For me, seeing PewDiePie not only pick up but actually enjoy and want to keep going with drawing, I swear that made me tear up. That's so wholesome. It was like, you know when you show your older sibling or someone who is this role model for you, someone you look up to, you share with them something that you like and then they also start getting into and enjoying it and now you have this common interest and you're like, oh my god, they actually like it. They actually also think it's cool. That is such an amazing feeling. <laughs> now, I must say that I'm kind of biased. Like very like like really 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 biased as i've been a pewdiepie fan for as long as i can remember i literally grew up watching him i think he was the first person i subscribed to on youtube i think i might have even discovered youtube in the first place because i heard of pewdiepie and wanted to see what the hype was about and ever since i got on youtube at like 12 years old i have been a fan and what really made me admire him is how open-minded he was and how he constantly kept wanting to explore and learn something new from sharing his thoughts on philosophy books to exploring different sports and activities like surfing, bouldering, slinky, sharing his fitness journey, sharing the experience of moving to a different country, having a baby, and now learning how to draw from scratch. And that has always been nothing but inspiring, especially now seeing so many creators kind of falling off and ruining their careers or getting into some shady weird stuff it's kind of sad but when i watch pewdiepie especially now it kind of brings back this hope that there can be a happy ending well not ending he's not leaving anytime soon i think but a career path that is worth looking up to the way he and his content have progressed that now he can do everything he loves and share it with people and remind them that it is never late to learn to pick up a new hobby, go explore, go travel, read something useful, work on yourself, and that is really cool. Yeah, so these are kind of my thoughts and feelings about this story. I believe it is never late to learn art and anyone can do it and the art community should encourage and uplift and help each other instead of dragging each other down and dragging beginners down for being beginners and trying to learn. We have all been there, we have all made bad drawings it is a part of the journey and there is no end goal or finish line with art no matter how good you are there is still plenty of room for improvement and there will always be someone better than you and that is good that means you have something to look up to and work towards and i think if you truly want to make art you will find all the time resources and opportunities to do so it takes time and a lot of patience but it will be worth it if you stick with it yeah so this is pretty much it tell me what you think in the comments what do you think of pewdiepie's one year art progress how does seeing someone succeed make you feel and if you enjoyed this video then press like subscribe i have other talking videos like this on my channel as well as some tutorials that you might find useful so you can go watch those if you want or if you just want to look at the art that i make then you can check it out on instagram cara or here on youtube shorts and good night good day goodbye